there, this is Miss Caitlin from FIBO Kids Art Academy and I'm here to talk to you about our Around the World series where we visit the seven continents of the world. Right now we are visiting the continent of Africa and I wanted to give you a little taste of how our projects might usually go. So in our classes we will talk about a specific country, learn its map, flag, uh, maybe an animal or landmark that resides within that country. So today I wanted to again just give you a little sample of what that's like with our friend the ring-tailed lemur. These little guys are from Madagascar, and I'm going to be showing you how to draw this little guy today. I'm not going to do all the coloring steps with you. Um, if you want a more extensive lesson, then go ahead and sign up with us at FiboKidsArtAcademy.com in the Around the World series, and I'll see you there. But let's dive into this project uh, and see how to draw these really adorable creatures from the island of Madagascar. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to my desk so that you can see what I have just for this project today. Now, obviously, the coloring is kind of unrealistic. He's got a rainbow on him, and that's just for fun. You don't have to do that, or you could, if you want to create a rainbow lemur like I have today. In real life, these lemurs are more of a brown or a gray color in the areas where we see the blue and the green rainbow happening. For this project, it is done in watercolor, so you would want a piece of watercolor paper or something thick like a Bristol paper. Uh, you're going to need, of course, watercolors, Sharpie, pencil, eraser, and for the nose, this area is typically all a black color on the lemur, but we want to be able to see some of the details. So maybe like a white gel pen or some kind of white paint pen, some thin white material will help bring back those details. For me, I've got like a silver one here. That can work too. So I'm going to go ahead and just set some of these items off on the side. I'm going to take out my piece of paper and let's get started on this lemur. All right, so for the drawing today, Again, you want to start on your nice piece of paper that's going to handle all that watercolor. If you want to start maybe on a practice paper and do this uh, practicing at first before your nice piece of paper, you can do that too. I want you to use your pencil and eraser, but I'm going to use a Sharpie just so that you can see my pencil lines, okay? All right, so for your paper today, you want it to be turned vertical so that it's tall. If you want to see what we're going for here, I'll try and keep our friendly lemur on the side. Okay. So for the shape of the head, these lemurs have quite an interesting head shape. It's almost like a pentagon of sorts. So I want you to go on this side of your paper towards the left, and we're just going to start by drawing a curved line. Then you'll draw two kind of diagonal lines coming down and curve those around so they kind of meet almost at a point for the chin on the bottom. Now lemurs are quite interesting creatures. They've been described often as like a hybrid of a monkey, a cat, and also a dog. They kind of look that way if you see their faces. For their ears, um, for the ring-tailed lemur's ears, they kind of poke out on the sides. So you're gonna draw almost like this elongated U-shape. If you wanna add like details, like if you've got a picture of a ring-tailed lemur open right now, maybe on Google, um, as a reference, you can kind of see their ears get a little bit more interesting with those contour lines. Before we add details on the face, let's get in the rest of the body. Ringtail lemurs have these very fluffy bodies with their fur, but the basic shape that we're kind of looking for today is almost like a jelly bean. Let me show you. So I'm going to start underneath the chin area here, and I'm going to draw almost like a jelly bean shape or a big oval all the way around. So again, doesn't really look like how our picture looks here. We're working on it. The basic shape is just there to guide us. From here, we can add in things like the arms. Um, these lemurs actually spend a lot of time on the ground rather than in trees. They hang out in trees, but they're gonna mostly be hanging out on the ground. So we're gonna go ahead and draw the first arm kind of coming out here. So draw a curved line and a curved line. Now we're not gonna see all of their little digits so you can just draw as many as you can see. I'm gonna draw a finger here that connects to the rest of the arm, a finger here, and another one maybe kind of right there. Maybe the rest are kind of hidden behind. Let's go ahead and finish up the legs that are closest to us. So I'm gonna start by going on the back of the lemur here and following that curve, making the back part of the leg, the thigh, going more towards the front. Their back legs are the biggest, so we're gonna draw a curved line down. Then draw two 
curved lines going in the same direction. Same thought process. Now you're going to draw that little foot and some curved lines to make the toes. Again, we can't see all of them just from the perspective, but you can draw in more depending on your needs. Now, you actually get to erase a couple of lines here. I don't have the luxury of erasing today with my marker that's permanent, so I'm just gonna take out a pink marker here really quick. And you would erase with your actual eraser this line and this line here, because you don't need them anymore. Might as well get them out of the way while we're trying to add in everything else. Okay, next, let's go ahead and add in the back legs, uh, the legs that are just gonna be farthest away from us, that's all. You can start right here, close to the chin, and draw a curved line down. Two lines coming out. It's got like their little uh, hand kind of curling upwards almost, like they're stepping or about to move. And you can draw a couple of little toes, some little fingers from their hands. We're going to draw the last leg here. Draw a diagonal curve line. Two curved lines again, kind of going in the same direction. Curve line for the foot. And then you can draw in as many toes as you think you could see. Now that we've got the body, we'll draw the tail in at, uh, well, actually, let's just go ahead and draw it in now, and then we'll focus on the face. For the tail, they have these very long tails um, that are striped. They're very interesting and fluffy. Mine doesn't look particularly fluffy in my picture, but you could feel free to add in more texture and make it much more interesting, and kind of how it looks in real life. But just for basic shapes, you're going to start kind of on this back part of the lemur here, draw a big curved line that curves around and meets back on the lemur. You can draw this tail however you want, but I've decided I want my lemur's tail kind of curling upwards and around. Let's turn our attention back towards the face. So for the lemur, for a ring-tailed lemur, you're gonna wanna draw almost like a letter M on the very top of their head. This part of their fur is gray and it leads into the rest of their body here. They have these little eye patches as well that you can see. They're kind of like sideways teardrop shapes. So you're gonna to wanna to draw those two. And then you have the eyes, very simple, two circles. You can add a highlight if you want, but you are gonna to need to draw in a little circle for the pupil. We have the nose area, which is a patch. Start with a little U shape then draw a big U shape and you can plan in the nose now which is just a little triangle they do have a very defined nose bridge and then you can draw in a line for the mouth and there we have the basic parts of the lemur now you can add in other details such as the inner parts of the ears but be sure to include stripes on the tail uh, usually they'll have about like 13 14 ish stripes on there but every lemur is different so you can add in a couple of stripes on the tail. Now, as you can see, as I'm working, I am curving those stripes because their tail is round. If I just drew straight diagonal lines for my stripes, it would not look quite right. It would look very flat and two dimensional. And I don't really want that for this adorable lemur. Now you could pause the video at this point if you need time to just look at this for reference. Otherwise, I want you to pause anyway and outline everything with a permanent marker. So you're going to want your Sharpie. I'm going to go ahead and show you what my picture looks like without all those eraser lines and filled in with the Sharpie. So I'm going to go ahead and switch that out now. And you can pause the video here in order to get an idea of what it's to look like. Resume when you're ready. All right, so once you are done adding in all that Sharpie and you filled in your stripes, you filled in those little patches, let's talk about how to fill this part in on the nose. Now, like I said, you might want to have a sort of paint pen, um, something around that'll add that nose and the detail back in. So even if you color over it in Sharpie like this, 
Now it doesn't look very detailed at all, and you can't really tell what's going on there. You can use that white material quite fast just to add the nose and everything back in, and then bam. It's as if the details never left. So now at this point, I'll show you a little bit of watercolor. I won't do the whole lemur with you, um, but I'll show you at least how to kind of start it. So as I mentioned, these lemurs in real life are actually more of a gray. If you've ever seen the movie Madagascar, King Julian, perfect example of a ring-tailed lemur. But interestingly, in a ring-tailed lemur society, it is actually a female-dominant society. So you're usually going to have a female who is a queen or a leader of a group but male and female lemurs do uh, fight each other for dominance in that sense, or fight for control. Lemurs do live in really large groups, like you see in the movie Madagascar. They can live up to, or as many as 17 lemurs in one little group family. All right, so I'm just getting my brush nice and wet. If you want, do a gray lemur, but if you wanna have a lot of fun with it today, make it purple, why not? We want most of the lemur's body to be that sort of like dark color. Its belly is more of a white, so it's lighter. Now again, we're just making this lemur rainbow for fun, but you can make it look more realistic if you want. If you want to add fur texture, you would take your brush and your color and kind of using it you, uh, with the brush standing straight up, you make these little sort of strokes, almost as if we were like an impressionist. You can kind of splotch the color in, you can do wet into wet on the inside of the lemur. Just be mindful that you don't wanna mix complementary colors together right now. So if I was using the color blue, for example, like I was, and then I wanted to put orange on top of it, I would advise against that at this time. Putting orange next to your blue in the sense that we're using our watercolor right now, you will have a high chance of making brown, which you maybe, maybe you want, but if you're trying to make this very bright rainbow lemur, you probably don't want that. Instead, I would stick to using analogous colors on the body, at least for the most part. Analogous colors are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, so like blue, purple, blue and green. They are typically the ones that are gonna look very expected, calm, nice, when they're next to each other. So you can fill in the lemur as much as you want. Again, I'm just being very loose with it right now, showing you a little bit how it's done. This little section on the top of their head is also a part of that gray part of their body. So we would fill that in. You can fill in their arms, their little fingers, etc. As for the tail, you can have some fun. If you want to make a rainbow, like a full spectrum rainbow on the tail, you can. For me, what I did is I started off with the purple, kind of on the side. Of course, lemurs don't have rainbow tails in real life. Really wish that were the case. Even out of all the hundreds of species there are, there's no rainbow lemur. You're just going to take that color on your brush, move up, grab a bit of blue. Might use a different blue here. Move up. Clean off your brush if you need to and switch to green. And then just keep going. Then comes yellow, kind of doing my rainbow backwards here. And then orange until you finally get to red. So you can do your tail that way. You can see I added lots of detail. As for the background, you can kind of decide what kind of background you want to do. Maybe your background is uh, maybe a setting that you would find the lemur in, like its natural habitat. Um, if you're trying to think natural habitat, again, they do hang out in trees, but you're going to find them a lot in brush. Um, otherwise, you could do kind of what I've done here, which is just add a color to the background and making it stand out. 
When I was thinking of a color to choose for my lemur here, I did a lot of blue initially, so I wanted to make it really stand out. So I did choose a complementary color for the background just to make the colors on my lemur stand out even more. Now, again, this is just a kind of a sample of what we would do in our classes. I would instead show you step by step the entire process and work with you as you outline and do all of your coloring. And I'd also give you even more facts about our lemur today. Even so, I do hope you have a lot of fun creating this fast lemur project, and I would love to see what you've created. Again, if you want to participate in more around the world content and learn more around the world projects, visit some countries with me, then you can go to our website, vivokidsartacademy.com to register. I do hope to see you very soon, but bye for now.